<laughs> One second, the cable is under my chair. Um, eh. Okay, hey, um, yeah, we're doing Blindfolded Breath of the Wild today. Um, it's a game that many of you have probably played and got very famous, and we'll beat it without uh, looking. That means with a lovely blindfold here, which we had an incentive for. Um, which blindfold will we play with today? The Black Penguin is the winner today. Okay. May it do you many luck and many favors. Yes, this is this lovely blindfold here. Very cute. Very, very cute. A good choice. And um, yeah, I have my commentators. I have my commentators, uh, Player 5 and Nuki here in person, Player 5 uh, online, and they will be commentating the entire run. I will be having different headphones. I can. I won't even have a mic this time around. I have just headphones here connected to the game feed, so I have no feedback whatsoever. And um, yeah, I give it up, and you can introduce yourself if you want. Yeah, so I'm Nikki. Uh, I ran Twilight Princess earlier. I did 100%. I run 100% for this game as well. Uh, that's about it. <laughs> Player 5. Uh, and I'm Player 5. I speedrun Breath of the Wild, and I've commentated one of Bubsia's blindfolded any percent runs before. Yep, yeah, so it seems that he's ready to go. Oh, uh, you're good. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. So yeah, Breath of the Wild. Um, the beginning of this run is going to be a plateau, which is completing the four shrines, Stasis, Magnesis, Cryonis, uh, Bombs. Uh, and also getting the tower. We're gonna get the tower first. Uh, the beginning of this category is quite cutscene heavy, quite slow. Um, so honestly, it is a good place to read through donations, as silly as it sounds, but we will get some general stuff out of the way. Um, there's a Wii U and Switch version. This is run on Switch because of faster uh, loading zones and just loading in general. Uh, there was an update for the Switch version, which before that update, the Wii U is faster. Now the Switch is faster. Uh, the game is in French because of faster Zelda cutscenes. Uh, any other general stuff? E5? Off the top of your head? Um, I think we'll probably just get to stuff as we go. Yeah, so we're actually already we're going to be seeing some side hopping and general movement stuff. So we're going to be using a lot of side hopping, uh, back flipping. Uh, he's going to be doing a lot of counting, whether that's to the BT BPM or like a song in his head or like the steps of Link. Um, it's very important. Uh, a lot of the movement is like perfected to the T because he needs to know where he is at all times. Uh, Two-handed weapons will be very important for that, so we're going to grab an axe as soon as we get out the front door. But for now, we're just going to do some nice side hopping and running. Place la tablette chez Ika sur le terminal. Laisse-la t'ouvrir la voie. Yeah, so with um, targeted jumping, you can get more consistent like movement. Um, because you'll move in one of the four directions, uh, left, right, up, or down, or like forward or backward. And so that's used for a lot of the movement, just because it's a lot more consistent. Yeah, so visual runs are obviously much more different. Uh, a lot of the time in blind photo runs, they're going to have what's called normalized setups, which is something that is just you can consistently do with no eyesight, like... 100% of the time. Um, a lot of the tricks in visual runs will have like a great deal of deviance. So it's definitely a much different approach than what we're used to. 
Also, completely unrelated from the run, uh, Bubsia has a black penguin blindfold, and I have a, a pink otter, so we're matching. So here we have the opening cutscene. Uh, it's a nice cinematic that shows how beautiful Breath of the Wild is. And in the visual speedrun, you actually don't watch this. You clip out of bounds and skip it, which saves time because you skip this long cutscene. But uh, it's actually possible to do in blindfolded. Just um, it's a lot harder and doesn't really save that much time because you have to worry about getting lost out of bounds. Right, and we're going to be seeing a lot of safety saving because thankfully the save system in Breath of the Wild is very, very accessible, very friendly, put it that way, very abusable. So it doesn't really cost much to save, so he's going to be doing that. Just, just be on the safe side. Auto saving is also either a blessing or a curse. Um, I think most runners have experienced that, but hopefully it'll work in his favor. Yeah, this is mostly just, as I mentioned before, be counting Link. to the steps. Link. Link. Vers le lieu que uh, this first, like, stretch of movement to the tower and getting to this pedestal is really finicky. Can be kind of in the sun. So we'll hopefully be good to get to the pedestal but it might take him a little bit of moving and shuffling around once we get there. Here's hoping. Uh, just about approaching. Yeah, so that little rock noise should tell him roughly where he is. And now it's just the whole shuffling process. Very good. So this will be a, a pretty long cutscene activating the tower. So now would be a good time for donations if there are any. I definitely do have some donations. I have an anonymous $30 donation uh, with no comment, and I also have an anonymous $25 donation with no comment, and both were actually fighting over different blindfolds. As you can see, the Black Penguin finally won it out at the end. Thank you so much for those donations, though. And I have a $5 donation from Slowpoke that says, I'm so excited to see Bubsy at ESA. Blindfolded speedrunning is no joke, and I admire his commitment. I'm so happy that I made it in time for his Orcrina time run, and now for the Breath of the Wild run. Good luck, Bubsia. Yeah. Thank you so much for everyone for your donations, and I'd like to remind chat, we have an incentive as well. We have a BLS, BLSS showcase of Breath of the Wild coming up after the run is over. You do want to see that. Nuki and P5 can explain it way better than I do, and I'm just going to say Link will fly. Link will indeed fly if you reach that incentive. So please do. Yeah, so he's going to save, and then we're going to jump off the tower and do a fall damage cancel, which by throwing the weapon and then swapping it, it sort of resets his height, and uh, we don't take fall damage. Fall into the cutscene. Quite nice. Just climbing down can be really tedious. <laughs> So we're going to make our way over to bombs first. Uh, it's just a fairly simple stretch of beat counting. Nothing too in the way. Uh, there are some sections that get really, uh, really complicated. <laughs> I do just want to stress how kind of <laughs> crazy it is that this game is done and blindfolded. Like, 
I don't know, I feel like just a few years ago, if you had told me this, I would have never believed you. But it's just, this game has come really far. Not just visual runs, but Flying Folded 2. And Bubsia is definitely someone pushing games, not just this game, but games in general, blindfolded. And uh, he's doing a lot for the blindfolded community. I very much admire him. I'm sure many do. Yeah, so one thing um, that the two-handed weapon is good for is changing Link's facing direction. Uh, while you're swinging it, you can input any direction and Link will actually turn that way. It's called swing buffering. So you can get really consistent angles, which is very important for a blindfold speedrun. So you'll see it right here. He also is using a third-party controller, an 8-bit do um, controller that uses a uh, D-pads instead of sticks. So it's even more consistent. That was very good. Yeah, so he does have two controllers. He uses the 8-bit do for majority of the run. Um, he has a notched pro controller as well for uh, scanning amiibos and for that BLSS incentive as well. Uh, now would be a good time for a donation or two. Indeed, I have one. I'm going to tell the audience, hype, but whisper hype, okay? I have Tummy Fluff here for $200. Yeah. With the, the simple comment, for the good cause, and I couldn't agree more, that puts us a little over $800 away from meeting that BLSS showcase. Come on, chat. I know you can make it happen, and I have a challenge for you. I want to see yep. Bubsia pull up his blindfold at the end of this run and seek 25k. I know you can do it. Come on. Thank you, Sir Tire. Sounds good. Yeah, the bomb shrine is mostly just um, kind of bunny hopping around these targeted side hops and then throwing bombs when you're in the right position. Yeah, he seems to do, be doing quite well. Uh, okay, I don't want to speak too soon. Spoke a little too soon, but I think it would be fine. Yeah, he should be able to re anchor himself. Right. Oh. Yeah, and one of the most interesting parts of watching a blindfolded run. He is actually watching the runner mess up and come back from it. Because backups are really important. Oh yeah, the improvising is so impressive. That's very good. Wow. But whenever he got blown up and got in that corner, he his angle didn't snap to the wall. It was like sort of angled to the right. So the fact that he actually grabbed the ladder is kind of amazing to me. You know, it all works out. So, after bombs, we're going to make our way over to Stasis, but we're going to stop by the old man's hut. Um, we do want the pepper and the smell stream uh, for something pretty soon. So, normally in visual runs, uh, you wouldn't... Mm -hmm. Need cold resistance because you can get through to Cryonis quite quickly. There's, you, you just don't need it. But 
uh, we're sort of taking our time here. So we're going to need cold resistance. Uh, one pepper should be enough. Hey. Um, this stretch of running to the hut can be also a little finicky. Um, first, we're going to escape these ruins and then make our way up. But the angle the house gives can be a little, yeah, just like... <laughs> Walls in this game are just, it's hard to be incredibly consistent, like, you're never going to be 100% because, I don't know, Link just likes to grab things, he just sort of does what he wants, but we'll see how this goes. And then after we get out of the old man's hut and cook, uh, we'll be making our way up to stasis. Yeah, this this could be another time for a donation or two. I have to have his way over. Gold dwarf here for fifty dollars. I've been really anticipating this breath of the wild blindfolded run. Let's see that BLS as showcase, and I fully agree. Thank you so much for that donation. I want to see that Matt. I want to see Link fly, but then blindfolded. I highly recommend it. You won't be disappointed. So we're almost there. Just a few more pieces of movement. We're gonna try and get inside the house and normalize inside the, the corner. Like I said, especially on like odd pieces of collision that aren't like straight, uh, Link likes to just grab stuff. Yeah, so right now we are trying to cook the cold resist food and a stamina food that will help us later. Um, I believe in castle to gain back some stamina for climbing. Now this movement um, is very unreliable. Um, we'll be making our way over to the trees over there to cross the, the gap. And so it'll require cutting down a tree and having it fall so that we can cross it. Yeah, I believe he calls this tree the Tree of Doom. So if that tells you anything, uh, just hope for him. <laughs> Just the collision and getting on the tree and across is just like a lot that I've mentioned before. It can just be really finicky. Like he can do everything right and it just won't behave sometimes. Seems good. Yeah, one nice thing about this game is that it gives you ledge protection, so if you're holding ZL while you're close to a ledge, it will actually prevent you from falling off, which helps there. And actually here as well, to be able to get Link in a position that's normalized without falling off the edge. We don't like that rush room. Oddly enough, ledge protection is not for every ledge, it's sort of pick and choose. Uh, thankfully it works for these, but I know like the edges of towers, 
uh, does not work. Well, some parts of the tower. But it's a very useful mechanic. Uh, we're almost up. One more stretch of jumping. That should be it. So inside of stasis, the um, the shrine is on a cycle. Uh, you can see the gear in the back um, is spinning, and that's spinning a platform. So the goal here is to um, essentially stasis that while it's crossable, um, while it's flat, so that link can go across. So this movement right here is just trying to hit that cycle. As long as you make the cycle, uh, the rest of the stasis is pretty simple, hopefully. I guess you can never be so sure in blindfolded. But getting across is a very good start. And here we'll be introducing another um, very useful mechanic called a scope cancel. Uh, so that allows us to um, move the camera up a little bit by canceling out of the scope. And so you can move the camera up and then stasis the boulder as it's coming down. So just a few more bunny hops, a straight line, and good. Very good. That'll be two of the four shrines down. So we've got the Cryonis Shrine, which is up high in the, the snow, and then the Magnesis Shrine, which is over by the tower. So right here, this is going to be a really long section of uh, a long beat count. It'll be coming out two. Yeah, I believe it's 200 beats. I'm just straight running. Uh, this foot is pretty... It's pretty scary. It can be inconsistent. Uh, lots of scary points. There is a shield surf at the end of that 200 beat run, which is not entirely consistent. But... We'll see what happens. He won't. That's the fun of it. Anyway, it's so there's another the resist. Part. It'll get a bit more hectic later after he scans Amiibo for food. But for now, it's a bit easier to navigate. But yeah, like later with Menuing, he's gonna have to navigate like weapons and bows and food. It'll be a little bit harder. Yeah, so this is the long, uh, the long B count that I was talking about. So we're not going directly to the shrine. We're going to go down on that little, like, castle wall, I guess. Um, there's a chest with five 
spawn arrows, I believe. Uh, this is also with the shield serve. Hopefully it goes well. It's kind of out of his hands by now. Should be, should be good here. Uh, trying to find the chest for some bomb arrows, which will be useful in the boss fights later. So he's trying to wait for the keys, but I don't really know what it's doing. It's kind of just having fun up there. the last bit of movement up to the shrine, but getting that chest is uh, very, very good. For these long sections, you don't really know where you are until you reach like a, a landmark in a sense, or like a known queue, like some different type of flooring or like a chest. So reaching those like checkpoints in a sense is very, very beneficial. Thanks. Uh, Cryonis should be a bit more tame. Uh, there is a Guardian, which can be a little rude sometimes, but usually it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, we can get a donation in. I have a few for you, but I first need to catch my breath. I keep holding it <laughs> during this run. I have Umrog T-Burn with $50. It says, I am on the edge of my seat with this run. Let's go, Bubsia. And I totally agree. Going towards that blindfolded BLO, BLLSS showcase. Thank you for that donation. I also have Kier Farm with $55.55 of a donation. It says, hey, y'all. Watching Bubsy yes, speed run this game blindfolded inspired me to donate while blindfolded as well. I hope I typed the wrong the right amount. If so, here's five dollars for a great cause. Good job, Gear Park. Good luck to all the runners. Can't wait to see you all in Malmo next week. Thank you for your donation. Yeah, so make our way through Cryo. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Typical bunny hops. And uh, this is the only real part that you can worry about, but it seems it's good. there was very very smart okay, he's just gonna retry yeah so whenever he yeah. slipped off the the ramp it turned him which I don't know if it consistently turns it like that he just kind of slipped off it in a weird way the side hop didn't give him enough height. It's just the little things like that, which are quite hard to back up. But the nice part about Breath of the Wild is that um, inside the shrines, you can kind of just reload. It'll always send you back to the beginning. And so it's actually pretty easy to just save, reload, um, now he doesn't have to worry about the Guardian, because he actually took care of it last time. Yeah, 
so it should be good now. That audio cue is... Gives them a lot of information. Team's go. Yeah, so getting from here to Magnesis, there's no, there's no too easy way. Uh, the best option now is just warping back to that tower that we activated and then doing an earth all damage cancel. So he's going to try and find his way. A lot harder than it looks. So we picked up Cryonis, which in the visual speedrun actually never gets used. It's a little more useful for blindfolded as we'll be using it to cross the water and get to Magnesis. Yeah, so from here there's a bit of water blocking away, but we can use Cryo to make a more straight path. Uh, lines up very, very well coming down from this tower. Uh, he's going to use some scope cancelling. Uh, he's going to use some shield flipping. Should be good enough to get him across the water. So that's go canceling, but he was going down, not up. Yeah, most of the time uh, in blindfolded, you actually don't need to move the right stick. It's normally not a good idea to, because changing the camera angle can lead to some, uh, or it can make your positioning and movement less consistent. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so like P5 said, uh, turning with the right stick has a lot more just variability. Uh, all the stuff he does is 100% same every time, same every movement, but using the right stick, you're going to get different amounts of turns every time, and you just can't consistently do it. Uh, now would be a good time for a donation, if they have any. I indeed do have one, but I also want to say that we're less than $700 away from getting the BLSS. So let's keep it coming, chat. And also, if you donate $25, you will all automatically get yourself in for the daily prizes as well, which includes a wonderful Master Sword displate to put on your wall as well. So keep those donations coming, everyone. I want to see Link fly. With that, we have Cesedrix for $25 that says blindfolded runs never cease to amaze, and I fully agree. And he's doing it in front of a crowd. What a map lab. Right there was one of the only uses, maybe the only use of Magnesis in the run. Uh, right here, we actually use a fun setup to actually kill the Guardian by stasising the metal block and launching it at him. And the reason we don't use Magnesis is because it moves the camera, which, uh, as mentioned before, is really bad for blindfolded runs. Yeah, so he's going to stasis the door as well. Oh, 
Very good. All right, so that's the Plateau Shrine's done. We can head up to Temple Time and get our Paraglider. That's effectively the first half of the run. The second half of the run will just be collecting some stuff, some food, armor, weapons, and then making our way up to Sanctum. Hey. Yeah, Breath of the Wild speedrunning. Um, you need the paraglider to be able to leave the plateau. There's like a ton of glitches we have, but we actually don't have a way to skip the paraglider. So um, completing all the shrines is what lets you get the paraglider from the old man. Um, so every speedrun of Breath of the Wild will start with that. And then after that, what sets um, kind of Breath of the Wild apart from other Zelda games is that you can go straight to the end. It's open world. And so for any percent, we do just go to, to fight Ganon right after Plateau. But yeah, this part is pretty straightforward. Um, so it would be a good time for donations as well. Okay, I'm gonna stand up for this. Everyone in the audience, silent hype. Got it? I have five hundred dollars from Solid Parallel. It says finally a chance to watch the whole run instead of sneaking peeks around work meetings. Now let's see Link fly off into the sunset. Thank you so much for that donation. That puts us past 24K. And we are less than $200 away from seeing Link fly. Come on, everyone. We can make it happen. Come on, chat. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yep. Yeah, so Flipsia had a little bit of a hiccup, but... Luckily, this stretch of movement starts from working to bomb uh, shrine, so he should be fine, and we try as much as he wants. Yeah, so last time he had accidentally moved a little bit before swinging the axe, so Link got into an unexpected position, but yeah, you can just warp back and try it again. And I will say, the BLSS uh, showcase will be worth it. Uh, if you haven't seen BLSS before, like everyone's first time watching it is incredible. It's just it's such a a fun glitch, and to do it blindfolded is crazy. But um, blindfolded runners have found a way somehow. I'm so excited. You can do it, chat. Just 200 more. Yeah, so we're almost there. Um, just a little bit more movement. Making good progress. Should be good. I guess one thing we haven't talked about is uh, whistle sprinting. Oh, yeah. So if you hold whistle while mashing B, Link will actually run at 80% uh, of his sprinting speed while gaining stamina back. That was found, like, day one. Uh, but it's very useful. I know lots of casuals used it in their playthrough, too. It's... Almost a mechanic at this point. Mm 
Alright, so we're gonna start off. Uh, I believe he's going to. Yeah, get the bow. Uh, might get some arrows. He's going to be making his way to Harrow Field because we want to get some phantom armor from the DLC. Uh, attack up armor will be useful for whites and stuff. I believe we'll get that arrow trap. Instead of walking over, I'm just going to work mag. Uh, Magnesis is right next to the edge of plateau, so it's going to be easy to get down. Yeah, this will be a really big, long stretch of just beat counting. Um, once we get to the first armor set, hopefully it won't give him too much trouble. Uh, we'll see. For now, just enjoy the counting. This is mostly just all waiting up, collecting whatever we need to uh, actually get through the blights and stuff. Trying to play it as safe as possible without making too many uh, deviances. Alright, but yeah, the um the goal here is to make it to a couple of the DLC chests, which drop the or give us the phantom armor, and that gives us I believe it's eight defense per piece of equipment, which is pretty nice um, for surviving hits from the bosses, and also gives us attack up. And because it's um, part of the armor, like bonus, uh, it'll stay forever. Pretty nice. Yeah, between that and attack up, food will cook later. Will be quite sad with the boys and Kennedy. Yeah, and because we're taking on the final boss, like right at the beginning, um, having that 1.5 times uh, modifier or bonus from attack up level three is very important. See right there, he actually used the Magnesis rune to slightly change his facing angle. It's so small. Line up for later. It's so wonderful how it all works out. I know him and quite a few others. I'm sure he'll shout some people out. Uh, they put a lot of time into these routes, they went through a lot of things. I remember poking into a stream whenever he was first picking this up, and it's so much different than when he's, he was initially starting out. It's, this category has come a long way. Just about there. Uh, hopefully the chest doesn't give him too much trouble. We do have to magnet this down. It's a little scary.
Okay, saving and reloading there will cause the Bokoblin that was on horseback to get reset to some a different position so that it won't be bothering us. Yeah, as I mentioned before, the save system in this game is uh, quite abusable. Uh, so we want to make our way to the second piece, but we also want... Um, we do want to, at some point, scan those amiibo for the food. Right now he's trying to find his controller. And now his amiibo. I believe he's scanning a Pona. Pona is very interesting. Um, it can. It's just another thing that can go wrong. Not sure how consistent it feels since I last saw. Last I saw it was uh, a little inconsistent, but I guess we'll find out together. From what he told me, he seems confident. In. Yeah. So horses in this game can actually follow the like, road automatically, which in blindfolded speedrunning is actually bad because uh, it'll throw off the angle that you set. And so we're trying to avoid that here. Yeah, and it's looking good so far. We're almost at the second piece. So both the water and the location noise, uh, both very good audio keys from going to scan his OT link Amiibo for food. He is going to be scanning quite a lot of these. It's also very important that he keeps track of the number of food he has. If you can those who don't like to behave sometimes, it's, it's okay. Yep. Yep. So this is all backup food. Um, if he gets hit in the boss fights, then he'll have healing. And there is something called one-shot protection, which um, if you're at max hearts, um, you will survive a hit. And so healing back up to full is uh, very uh, convenient for that. Alright, he was just confirming some things, swapping controllers again, back to the 8 bit do. The uh, proof controller has served its purpose. He was waiting for the auto save. So we're going to be setting up for a wind bomb towards the general castle location. Um, 
So as long as you're within the, I guess, region of Castle, uh, the map will change from the normal overworld map to the Castle map. And in the Castle map, there's an option to warp to the entrance. So while wind bombs are obviously more of a visual thing, um, we're not looking for anything incredibly precise. We're just trying to get in that general direction. Uh, wind bombs being uh, jumping, placing a bomb, going into bullet time, placing another bomb, exploding the first bomb, and having that hit the other bomb into Link to give a lot of forward momentum. A bit dumbed down of an explanation. Uh, they're very, very intricate, a uh, lot of variability, very high skill ceiling sort of thing, but not too important in this case. Like I said, just getting over to this general direction. Yeah, that's like right about where the map changes as well. It's incredibly close, actually. He should spawn at that auto save. That seems a lot better high -wise. I think watching the facial expressions is my favorite part. Should be fine though. There we go. Yeah, that's the the nice part of that mini map functionality. Um, is that. If you try to leave um, Hyrule Castle, it'll always put you in the same spot, right at the front. Yeah, like it's never used once in even 100%, but here, quite useful. If I can interject for a second. Yeah, go ahead. We are going to see Link fly. We have officially met the BLSS incentive. Thank you so much, everyone. That was amazing. I'll read the donations in a little bit. All right, so entering castle, we want to get over to the armory. Um, we need quite a few things from there. Also, I love how stylish the doors are with stasis. Uh, yeah, we're gonna get a few weapons, and I believe the nature fang as well. Um, cooking with the dragon fire extends the attack up meal by up to 30 minutes. So we'll have plenty of time to actually do our thing. Uh, first, we're gonna have this guardian to deal with. Very nice. Oh. 
blindfolded perfect parry. And that'll get rid of that guardian for later, because we'll be warping back to the start of Hyrule Castle. Right. Yeah, if you enjoyed that, you're gonna love the boss rush. I believe that bomb is actually to uh, prevent Link from climbing. Right. The walls as he's like moving into the uh, into the castle because yeah link tends to grab onto walls randomly at in inopportune moments yeah so between here and armory there is a less office um i do know that they went through a lot of different uh methods was there figuring out how to get past the little guy, but they seem to have come up with something quite good. So let's see how it goes. nice thing with um, the enemy's AI is that I mean, they like can't see you once they're distracted by a bomb and if they're not like in the camera's view they're also much less likely to see you so right there you can lure it over and then sneak strike it which deals massive amounts of damage and then they'll always get up and then turn around um, so you can consistently get multiple sneak strikes on an enemy if you position yourself properly. Yeah, the nice thing about the bombs is like once they see the bomb first and not you, it's like it's like love at first sight. They don't let go of that. So it's quite quite a helpful mechanic. Use ninety percent as well. But the same was off as actually. These are some ancient arrows. Going to be very necessary. Uh, making our way down here, there's a lot of what's off this. Uh, there's also a mob one with a claymore. We do want, with also a claymore behind him as well. Uh, there's the nature thing I talked about. Now he's just counting his weapons, I think. Yeah, when he scanned amiibos, he actually did not want to open any of the chests. Um, so he currently has an extra couple of claymores. Oh, this part's pretty cool. Um, there's a really nice setup to sneak strike this moblin. So we'll be grabbing both of these claymores. So yeah, here's another instance of using a save reload to reset enemies' positions. So if you save right behind the Moblin and then reload, it will actually put it back there, de -aggroed, so you can just get a sneak strike. Poor guy was sweeping.
Alright, that was about as far down as we'll go. Uh, we're gonna start making our way back up. Uh, we do need to cook, obviously, for that attack up food before really making our final way up. So right now he's counting. Make sure he knows where the razor shroom is so that he can cook it later. This chest right here is a Savage Lionel Shield, which is a very cool shield, but uh, in this game, shields are basically all the same. Um, yeah, having more shields is nice because it's more opportunities to parry. But yeah, basically every shield, uh, or most shields, will break. Uh, if they, if you like, miss a laser parry. And so having multiple shields is nice for the boss rush, so that you have multiple chances to parry. Yeah, and there's the major thing I talked about, which will make his attack up food 30 minutes instead of like, uh, 4 to Eight, maybe. Depending on how lucky you are. Also used as a backup, 90%, or like a safer strat. I did say 30 minutes. Uh, it's 30 minutes for like a fully fleshed out meal, but with just, just two ingredients, it's 11 minutes. It's still plenty of time. So yeah, we're gonna we're back, make our way to the balcony. Uh, we need ancient arrows. We need a bow, and then from there we'll do our next wind bomb, I believe, up to the sanctum area. that a good time for me to get in some donations? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you. In that case, I have $100 from Rubbish that says, Bubsia, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Let's get that VLS as an incentive. Thank you so much for that donation. We have Pons with $5 that says, Hype for another Bubsia run. Bubsy can and get beaten, and if Bubs does it first try, he'll earn an additional $10 for charity from me. Anyone wants to join that bet? That's the Star Crew coming in here strong. We have Anno here with fifty dollars as well that says we need this showcase, and we are getting that showcase. Tell me, Fluff came in with two hundred dollars that just said fly, and I love that. And we have ten dollars as well from the kitty within the walls that says make Link fly. And all your donations got us to the point where we are going to see the VLSS Showcase. Thank you so much, everyone, for donating. And I have a challenge for you, chat. We have a bunch of other donation incentives open. But we are only $301 away from hitting the 25k mark. Let's get it before the end of this run. So like focused in. Right, he's just gonna reset up. Not exactly sure which part went wrong. I believe he's trying to stand on that little edge, um, on the edge of the castle brick. But it was just a really small error that threw him off. Uh, it's just timeless. 
fucking cheeseburger video. Well, Bubsy is it, or well, Bubsy is um, getting back to the position. You could probably read it. Donation, if you have it. And the the goal here is that uh, you know we have collected most of the weapons we need. And so we're making our way to the end of the boss fights. Yeah, it's just some final tidying up on our arsenal. Should be good now. And yeah, that's what the stamina food was for. <clears throat> On the balcony, which is very good. We got the arrows, the royal bow, and the ancient arrows as well. Wind bomb now. Yeah, so, right here, we see another wind bomb. Uh, and this one, you get a nice lineup that'll send you basically straight to the final room, to the uh, sanctum. I guess you can go ahead and explain Windblade Skip. Ah, uh, yeah. So Windblade Skip is um, essentially we shoot a an arrow into the arena as we're entering the cutscene and what that does is it actually freezes the arrow in place as soon as the cutscene starts and in Breath of the Wild enemies um, like hurt boxes they're active during cutscenes and so that arrow that we have frozen in place in a specific spot will continuously deal damage to Wimblight until it dies. And so we can effectively kill the first Blight with one shot. Yeah, that's but yeah it does require a very precise setup. So yeah. that's what you're seeing right here. And this is one of the places where kind of the visual speedrun uh, also uses like bunny hops uh, targeted you know jumping to set up link's position what is the actually it's the only one that i can think of See the scope cancels, move the camera up, and then 
use the rune to move the camera back down. And then we'll be shooting the arrow as we're walking forward. And so that should uh, freeze the arrow in the same spot every time. If he forgot the attack of the that would have been fine. But thankfully he remembered. You can see it looked like his... Not oh, feeling so good. Okay, same. It's, it's just barely off. It should have pretty small health left. Yeah, Bubsia has said that um, this one can kind of just fail randomly. Um, or when Blight will survive with a small amount of health left. Oh no, I should be okay. So yeah, um, because we didn't defeat the Blight forms of Ganon in the Divine Beasts, they will appear in Castle uh, to make the final boss rush a lot harder. So that's what we'll be dealing with. Um, if you die at any point during this, like next, what, four or five phases of, um, of bosses, you have to restart. So this is a pretty intense portion of the run. Right here, Water Blight is pretty pretty simple. Uh, phase one, you can see, you just kind of hit with the Royal Guards Claymore. This part's pretty impressive, but um, you would think headshots would be pretty difficult if you can't see, but the targeting system is pretty nice in that it auto-aims at Water Blight's head so you can get pretty consistent headshots there. Um, while Water Blight is by the throne, you actually cannot hit it. And so you're kind of just waiting for Water Blight to go back to the other side of the room. Those headshots are really impressive. It's so cool. That's two down. And for Fireblight. Fireblight is mostly cycling between headshots and body shots. Pretty straightforward. And very consistent. There's phase one. Phase two will be pretty similar. Um, first, you have to knock Fireblade down. Uh, it gets this uh, like shield around him, and so the bomb will get sucked in, knock him down, and now the shield is gone. Now it's just using the claymore and some more headshots and body shots to finish it off. Yeah, so when he got one of the chests earlier, he got fire arrows as well. So that might have thrown him off for a second. Ah, just barely. Thunderbolt is definitely the uh, the toughest. Um, anyway, because phase one sort of leads into like, into phase two. Um, like what happens in phase one is pretty important. It will affect phase two. Uh, it can do that more justice than I can. Yeah. So uh, Thunderbolt, you know, it's the hardest blight for basically everyone. Speedruns are no exception. But for phase one, he's got a shield, 
So we want to break it. And if you break it in phase one, uh, it'll come back. Or if you break it at the beginning of phase one, it'll come back at the beginning of phase two so we can break it and then it'll be out of commission for a while so we can get easier hits in. But right here, you need to try and beat phase one while staying in the same spot. And that's so that we can get a consistent setup for this part. Um, normally, the game expects you to Agnesis a pillar and use that to knock Thunderblight down. But that's super inconsistent if you can't see, because the pillars are pretty random where they fall. And so, being able to kill Thunderblight phase one uh, without moving is very important. And so that was beautifully done. Very good. Yeah, that's Blight's down onto Calamity. Uh, this part of the run is mostly going to be uh, lots of, you know, arrows, you know, headshots, ideally, and then flurry rushing and laser parrying. So it's pretty much like you would normally fight with the boss. Um, here he's making sure he's at full health. This is important for one shot protection. Well, I wonder if he knows that he took splash damage. I think he does. Okay. And yeah, there's a couple of weapons, useful items um, scattered around the arena. So we picked up a shield, a one handed sword, and 10 bomb arrows, and a Another Royal Claymore. So yeah, right here, very impressive stuff, but he's blindfolded and getting all of the like perfect dodges. And while um the Lambda is on the wall, you can shoot him to knock him down. So, or you could parry. Or you, or you can just parry. <sighs> Thankfully, he had his one shot protection. Good thing he talked. And yeah, so it's like at this point, taking damage or getting hit um, is fine as long as he's at full, uh, full hearts. So that's what all those dudes is for. But yeah, these um, laser parries are pretty difficult, but there are really good audio cues. So as long as you keep your position consistent, um, you can get the, the parries. Even without being able to see. So right there, one Ancient Arrow will knock Calamity off the wall. Yeah, Calamity on the wall is really bad because, you know, it just takes a long time. Very nice. It's just so impressive every time. Yeah. Phase 2 will start around half HP, so you should be very close. Now oh, I'm starting to get nervous. 
I think he's like one more hit away. It's so close, y'all. Yeah. That's yeah, there we are. That's actually really good because that wind attack is really bad. So yeah, now phase two. Um, Calamity is invincible while the red shield is up. And so the goal here is to actually set up a stun lock. Where we'll be able to ideally deal with all of Calamity's HP. Using this, you just need to spin and then slam at a certain time, and Calamity will stay stunned. And so he's using an audio cue of the like spear, um, like going into the ground. Yeah, it's like a spear and on the end flags as well. Which, with all the sound going on, I I can't imagine the level of focus. This is incredible. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was really well done, though. It was a really good stun lock. Uh, didn't quite manage to get through all of it. Ran out of stamina there, but that was like over half of um, phase 2's HP. Going on wall is a bit scary. Thankfully... Oh, they speak too soon. Thankfully Bubsia is just too good with these parries. Yeah, the wall uh, lasers are pretty um, pretty tough to deal with, <laughs> even when you can see. So it's very impressive stuff. And here, you restart the sunlock, even though it should just. So basically by now the run is safe. Um, if you were to die in Dark Beast, it doesn't really matter. He just spawns at the start of Dark Beast. Uh, Gomini Ganon is just really scary since, as P5 mentioned earlier, um, you have to redo all of lights. It's really, really terrible. But he's, he's just too powerful. What can stop this man? Certainly not a blindfold. Uh, we don't need a Pona. He's going to do some bunny hopping and some scoop canceling. Uh, these shots can be a little inconsistent, but it's mostly just shoot until you get it. It is pretty cool to watch. You can't have fear whenever you don't have eyes. The hitboxes on these light rings are awful. Yeah, this is all one big setup. We are coming up to time pretty soon. Uh, I will hit the button for him. I don't. Or maybe. Maybe I should let him find it. What do you all think? Okay. Well, I think he should be able to find it. It's it's a very big button. Two shots left.
Oh no. Well, like we mentioned before, he does get to start from Dark Beast, so... Yeah, out of all the places to die, that's probably the best one. Can I throw it in quick donation? Yeah, go ahead. I am Big Al here with a very appropriate donation. Fifty dollars that just says I'm mind blown right now. I can't even comprehend how this is possible. So excited for a bonus showcase, and so am I. Come on, Jen. Let's bring it home. Let's bring it to 25k. What do you think? Let's bring Bubsy home with 25. Also, I just want to make note of the pace as well. Like, Bubsy put a two-hour estimate, and he just he just killed it. Like, it's been such a good run. It's so impressive. Even with more, even with more mistakes, it would have been still so impressive. But he's done so well. Also, the horse definitely got hit by that, but who cares? We have our one true hero right here. Wavy's found the button. Time is coming up. Oh, nice. Ten seconds. C'est l'essence même de Ganon que tu vois. Tout ne dépend plus que de toi. Maintenant, Liv. That's what I was thinking. Is it 126? Yeah. Yeah. Four minute PV. Well done. That's so impressive. I'm so proud of you. I also think you started the button earlier. Than yeah. Normal, right? Started a minute early as well. <laughs> Indeed, that was very good. That was amazing. Can I get another round of applause for this man? Do you want the headset? Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, thank you. Hello, uh, what's up? I apparently have to beat by like four minutes or something. Um, makes that death at the end quite more bitter, but... <laughs> um, yeah, a good run, I'm happy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. It was uh, pretty clean, some mistakes here and there, but that's how it always goes. Like, blindfolded runs never go perfect, honestly. Um, but yeah, that was Breath of the Wild. Uh, I 
want to quickly make a little announcement actually uh, regarding my next projects because you might have uh, seen me grind Ocarina of Time and Breath of the Wild recently. And um, yeah, probably many of you know me rather from SM64 and I've already teased this a bit, but um, I have some big, big, big news coming up in like one week. So just stay tuned. I will have like an announcement video and stuff on YouTube and it will match the hype of 120 star probably. It will be a big project and uh, just want to tease that quickly. I actually will not relieve it. I will uh, release it now. So. <laughs> Such a tease. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, the video is not ready yet, but yeah, that's upcoming. I will grind more Breath of the Wild on my channel if you like that. Um, give my commentators, Nuki and Player5, some love. Uh, I'm sure they did a great job. A round of applause. <laughs> And yeah, um, that's it. Thank you for having me here in ESA in person, finally again, and hope to be here back in the future. Thank you very much. I have some news for you. Mm. You may have forgotten about your incentive, but I haven't. Oh, true. Wait a second. Uh, oh, Because yeah, that yeah, yeah. got mad not even halfway through the run. They oh, want to see Link okay. fly, so you make Link fly. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot. I actually have a quite bad memory as you. Uh, might not tell. <laughs> Are you sure about that after what you just shown? Um, yeah, then I guess I give this back to you. Yeah. It's okay, I will. It's me again. Hey. Yeah, BOSS. Um, it's gonna be quite short. Uh, Bowless Smuggle Slide. Uh, it's very complicated. It combines a lot of tricks. Uh, P5. You hopefully can explain it a bit better. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, how to go. so. Go ahead. <laughs> um, essentially, it's a glitch that will allow us to move very quickly uh, across large portions of the map. Um, this is supposed to take us all the way from plateau to castle. So, um, it's very useful, very impressive that you can do it blindfolded. Um, but yeah, essentially, the goal here is to set up a special state called a bow lift smuggle um, that will attach an object to Link's hand. And then once Link does a special step up animation, then he will start to just fly. And the object that's attached to his and will propel him. And if you flick the left stick left and right, you can um, accelerate through the air. Yeah, this part, this first part is hitting the bow and the bomb, and then he's trying to unequip the shield, so... Oh, he didn't, he didn't have the bow in his hand. But first part is getting... Oh, what am I Curious to hear his noises. <laughs> yeah, so, so there's right no, there, there's no real good cues of like knowing when you get it without your eyesight. But basically, you pick up the bomb and the bow, and you have the bomb and the bow in your hand, and then you jump and. Unequip shield, and that'll like put the object, in this case the bomb, like sort of detached from his hand. You'll have a good idea whenever you see it. Um, and then yeah, that's the sort of glitch state that P5 was talking about. So whenever he gets a step up animation, it'll sort of put him in the stuck animation where yeah, the object's going to give him a lot of momentum. So this looks good. He just needs to step up now, and now we can fly. So there is a speed cap in this game. Uh, I don't know the unit off the top of my head, but uh, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, if he does hit the speed cap, he just has to gather all of his speed again. Um, the thing about this trick is that you have to be holding B the whole time, and you also have to not hit the neutral stick position. Like, let the 
like even passing through neutral for a few frames. Um, if either of those happen, or you pause, or you home buffer, uh, you will drop immediately. So you sort of have to be constantly in action the whole time until you reach your destination. We're kind of like a, pi a pilot, now that I think about it. No sweet breaks. Yeah, this is a lot faster than uh, running. Um, yeah, and the reason you can do this in blindfolded is because of that mini map we were talking about earlier. Because, um, yeah, it can be hard to keep going in a consistent direction. Um, as you can see, we're kind of drifting to the right. As long as you get within a certain range of the castle, the mini map will appear and he'll be able to warp back to the front. I'm not sure he's going to be able to warp here, but the best part is that we flew, right? Um, one thing to note about BOSS is that this, like each object in the game has a different acceleration speed. So like Square Bomb accelerates slower than Circle Bomb, but Circle Bomb rolls and it's affected by wind, so in blindfolded's case, we obviously want consistency in that. Um, I believe the fastest accelerating object that you can hold is the pots in Hateno Village. They go really fast. So yeah, bombs, having them anywhere is just very versatile. Um, BOSS is used in... He doesn't like this. OSS is used a lot. Um, depends on the category. Uh, long distances, uh, categories that don't really get cute or anything, since wind bombs take damage, obviously. Uh, plateau in visual runs also got rerouted thanks to BOSS. Uh, before we used uh, a lot of BTPs, bullet time bounces. That was a lot harder of a route. Um, all dungeons, probably one of the hardest categories before BOSS was found. Now it's quite not so hard. Probably still hard, but it's a lot easier. But yeah, one of the nice parts of BOSS is that it doesn't deal any damage to you. Um, unless you're like flying through a cold section or a warm section of the map, <clears throat> and it does not require any stamina. So you can fly infinitely, like as long as you want. Um, it can't gain any height, so you need to find spots where you're high enough to get where you want to go. But yeah, you can gain speed just by flicking. So it's very, very useful. If you're really fancy, you can you can jump out of a BOSS and from there bullet time and do a wind bomb. Really cool. It's also really hard, but it's really cool. And we prefer style over anything else. That's what it's all about. This looks good. Very cinematic. Quite nice. Hard to tell, but I think he's just going to go fairly to the right of that pillar. Don't know if that's good enough. I think this, this looks good. I think it I, should be fine. Yeah, I think it should be fine. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, 
Thanks for having me, Bubsy. Uh, thanks for joining me, P5. Anything you have left to say? That was to you, P5. Oh, um, <clears throat> well, thanks to Bubsia again for letting me commentate another fantastic run. That's a lot of fun. And GG's again. That was insane. Yeah, GG's. Amazing run and an amazing showcase. That was definitely something else. Uh, the crowd behind you has loved it. Everyone else has loved it. Um, thank you so much, Bobsia, and thank you so much, Yuki and P5, for joining in. I have two donations to sign you off with. I have Onsen with $10 that says, The Madman has done it on his first try, <laughs> so I'm going to honor my bet. Amazing run, amazing commentary, and an amazing event. Here's the 25k. That's the star crew right there. And I have $5 from Shore that just says, and I'm going to close it off with that, amazing. That was it. We have a lot more ESA Winter 23 ahead of you. Thank you so much for, for having me. And see you on the next run.